Hey Metalheads, you like tattoos? Of course you do. If you're in the Louisville, Kentucky area, come on over the bridge to Clarksville, Indiana and get you some ink done at Ageless Art. If ink isn't your thing, they have a piercing studio as well. Visit agelessartclarksville.com to see some frequently asked questions, meet the staff. The shop is open Monday through Thursday, 12 to 8 p.m., Saturdays, 12 to 10 p.m., and Sundays, 12 to 6 p.m., all appointment-only spots. You can set up your appointments by phone at 812-283-1793 or email piercing at gmail.com and someone will get you set up for your first or your next tattoo or piercing. Hey, Metalheads, after going to a Rager, what's your ultimate go-to? Mine is totally pizza. So when Overload is playing or I'm promoting the Metal Forge Live showcases or the big goddamn metal show, I go to Pizza Donisi. Pizza Donisi is gourmet artisan pizza from right here in Louisville, Kentucky. It features things like the pizza of the month, the sandwiches, and also vegetarian and vegan options, which is so totally fucking cool for all, all of it's It's awesome pizza. You definitely want to go. Hey, and also, from time to time, they do cannolis. Oh, so fucking good. You know what they said, man. Leave the gun, take the cannoli. Yeah just like that in Godfather. They're located right next to the Mag Bar at 1396 South 2nd Street. So either stop in or call in at 502-213-0488. They're open till midnight. The Witching Hour. Heineken! Fuck that shit! Pax Blue Ribbon! Hey, Metalheads, you all hear me talk about Magbar all the time. It is the home to the Metal Forge Live showcases and is an integral stop in the ultimate underground metal tour schedule. They obviously feature live music, but the Magbar also has daily specials like Pint and Slice Night on Tuesdays with Pizza Donisi. But they also do Bring Your Own Vinyl on Thursdays with DJ Kent Jackson. And Finer Things Sundays. Located right next to Pizza Donisi at 1398 South 2nd Street. Open 3 p.m. to 4 a.m. seven days a week. Get your asses out to the Mag Bar. Rock out. For 45 years in keeping Louisville weird, Electric Ladyland has been there for all your eccentricities. While they do offer the best smoking supplies out on the market today, there's a whole lot more to check out. From ashtrays and blacklight posters, to records, incense and burners, and items to stock your metaphysical supply. They're open from 10 to 10, 7 days a week. Located at 2325 Bardstown Road in Louisville, Kentucky, and at electricladyland420.com. Roll out. In a broken wasteland, I come to my fire and place your blood and steel. Upon my fire
What's going on, metalheads? Thank you all for tuning in to this week's episode of the Metal Forge. My name is Mark Jackson, and I am your host. This week, we have all hell. And I don't even know who's actually coming in because I've just been talking to the account. And I'm just like, oh, shit. I, it totally slipped my mind to ask who fucking is, like, doing the interview, right? So... Anyway, All Hell playing Steel and Stone 7 with Overload Temptations Wings, Oblivion Throne, Children of the Reptile, and Twisted Tower Dire in their only performance of the year. And with him, as always, is Jason Gardner, the promoter of Steel and Stone. Jason. I prefer a uh, mastermind of Steel and Stone. That Bastard be- mind? <laughs> that works too. Yes. It's the only it's the only show I promote all year except for my bands, which is like usually just like an opening slot somewhere. So So yeah, it's finally almost on us. Next uh, next Metal Forge uh, will be the day. So I know. And, and 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 you know, I I'm t- I'm got a toss up. I don't know who's going to be on that Metal Forge yet. It's coming down to two different guests. And... Well, I have I have uh, sent a Raven, as they say, Electronic Raven, to a certain last band who's not been on the show before. He said he is going to make it happen, so we shall see. Yeah. So it, this is this is the idea. Either it's going to be Oblivion Throne on the day of Steel and Stone, right? Or it's going to be Rob Dietrich from Blackened Whiskey (laughs) on the day of Stealing Stone. Uh, I'm hoping it's Oblivion Throne because it would be nice to, you know, actually, uh, you know, talk them up and and do some stuff. And I, I promise this time I am going to try and go live with Metal Forge updates from the road and steel and stone because that weekend we are actually playing back in louisville that saturday night at magbar with uh belushi speedball and a few others for thrash giving which is belushi's uh thanksgiving show cool that's exciting yeah so dude here man i'll tell you i was just like yeah I'll do a show. I'll, I'll put on a two night thing, and and then it got to me. I was like, oh shit, I'm I'm gonna put on a two night fucking thing. I don't have fucking I don't have fuck all of nothing and you know planned. What the fuck am I gonna do? And then it's just like, holy shit, it's here. What the fuck have I done this last eight months? Yeah, I mean- and, and and luckily enough, it, it it came together. So it's like, do you still get that like? that rush you know I like to do it like um, I plan starting like January February kind of see who's putting out albums that year or you know whatever and then like about uh, June I like to get everything finalized get the poster work hardback then it gives me about a month to get the label or the label, the logos and stuff placed and then I like to announce about September so it's kind of fresh in people's minds and and then all I gotta do is like wait two months till you know the show, which is usually the first. Uh, well, it used to be the first Saturday after election day. Now it's the first, I guess, the first Friday after election day. Uh, right. So yeah, because time, time has fallen back. It gets dark early. It feels more, feels more rock and roll, more evil, more uh, atmospheric. So people come out sooner, and uh, yeah, we just have a good time until uh, no one's left. You know, and that's one of the things I always love about early fall shows like shows in like september october november is when it's getting dark earlier and you know the heat of the day isn't there anymore you know what i mean so that's totally what i dig about about those shows it's like it's leather weather and fucking you know, it's like you, you get the fucking thing going. In. Yep. You get the. It's like the the mental conjuring, you know. And I and I dig that shit. Well, Mark, uh, not to uh, take command of your own show here, but let's. Uh, it is the first uh, Metal Forge of the month, and I like to do my monthly uh, concert roundup for the uh, 
for the area and other uh, yeah. national or nationwide tours or regional tours or whatever it might be. So let's yeah, go for to, the month of uh, and, uh, the month of November. Yeah, let's go ahead and get started because I got quite a few in here to get right on. Through. So all right, so um, November fourth at the Odd here in Nashville, uh, Black Tusk will be on tour. Also yeah. joining them for three days is a Howling Giant who uh, who uh, just released their awesome new album, which I got right here in the mail today. So pretty nice. excited about that. Even though uh, they sent me the wrong one, which pissed me off. It wasn't the band; it was the it was the uh main I don't know if it was magnetic the eye fulfillment. or fulfillment. Yeah, it 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 rubbed me the wrong way. But anyway, um long story short, I ordered a limited edition splatter and they just sent me a run of the mill red transparent. So I was not happy and let them let them know about it right away. But uh joining them on that show is the band Serrate, who is like a um I'm not sure they're screamo or not. They're pretty new. Uh, actually, the promoter or the booker of the odd, odd um, Matt Evans, his new band uh, is opening up. So I'll nice. be checking them out. Yep. And then on November 10th, same venue, Steel and Stone. Enough about that. November 16th uh, at Asheville Music Hall is Brujera with um, Pinata Protest and Nomas and uh, pretty close to local uh, Eight Vermin. Will be playing. What do you think of band names like that, like Pinata Protest and uh, it, Dick Titty Blood Punch? And it wouldn't be something I'd listen to um, willingly. I might stumble upon it like it, but if I saw the name, I would probably just keep on going. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, on November 17th, uh, my friend uh, Josh from Grasping Air Booking has a fairy ring from uh evansville indiana coming down yeah yeah they're a couple hours away from me yep they'll be playing with uh aurora layer and shadow cloak at fleetwoods that's uh ten dollars uh november 17th november 19th uh at Asheville music hall is goat whore with withered spider and uh steel and stone alumni all hell so that would be an awesome show and then november 25th is uh another grasping air um show which is a 20 watt tombstone with mean green and shrunken heads at fleetwoods so Why all these band- temptations wings play in that uh, i have reasons i'll tell you later um so yeah 20 watt tombstone will be on tour goat whore withered and spider will be on tour fairy ring will be on tour brujera is on tour black tusk and howling giant even though they're on the same date they're actually touring very separate after the first three after their first three shows respectively right so they're uh, sharing a few shows together and and dude that's a rad thing to do i'm gonna do that more next year i think and uh (laughs) just for you uh louisville listeners they will be in your town at um portal november 5th howling giant wheel so yes and uh overload will be back in louisville on november 11th at the mag bar and then uh, I do know that 20 watt tombstone will be near Louisville again at the end of November as well. Nice. Uh, yeah, because here he and I, uh, Tom and I have talked about that. Cool. And then uh, obviously, and I'm going to go ahead and plug too, because it will be the, uh, the day after the first metal forge of December, uh december 2nd will be an another metal forge live at mag nice so uh with a couple of of heavy hitters coming out so those will be announced soon uh the reason temptation wings isn't playing that show there was actually two reasons for it it's a uh, black friday weekend ah uh, yes uh three out of four of us have families you know wife and kids yeah um, also i'm uh, a fan of 20 watt tombstone i've never seen him before so I was like, why work to enjoy this band where I could just go and pay and enjoy the band? <laughs> so, yeah, it's kind of like, it, it, was, it was like twofold. It was like, I'd rather just I go and not have to worry about parking, packing up my drums afterwards, packing up the merch after everything's over, blah, 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 blah. So. Please 
All right. We are here now with Jacob. See, this is crazy because we were just talking in the monologue about I, like a fucking bonehead, didn't get who I was going to be talking to. I'm just like talking with the band account. And I was like, oh, fuck. Who is it, man? Like, so it's Jacob from All Hell. I guess I could have said that at some point. Oh, dude, no, it, it, it happens, you know, I mean, it's, I, I often just sit there and I'm just like, oh, you know, blah, blah, blah. Everybody knows it's me. It's like, cause my account says my name. It's like, well, right. no, not everybody. It's like, oh, I'm Mark, by the way, I got to, I got to tell people this. It's like, yeah. Hey, I'm Mark. So, uh, awesome. So dude, welcome to the metal forge and Thanks, Thanks fucking steel and stone coming up. Yep. Just, uh, uh, two weeks. Uh, by the time this airs, it'll be about a week. Yeah. So fuck. Yeah. Uh, you're all's first time on the show. Uh, I know Jason's, uh, excited about that too, because I know he tried to get you guys a few years ago. Yeah. We've like talked about it a couple of times and it never worked out until, until this year. Like it just so happened that we were going to, we were working on a tour around the same time and it made sense geographically for us to just do a hometown show that night. So right on stoked that it worked out hell yeah so so where are you all being on either side of the date then uh the, i think the night before we're doing um savannah and then we're doing charleston the night after i think right on we and definitely have our... some fucking listeners in georgia and south carolina so yeah fuck yeah if you're in the area is go go see them on on the tour because fucking if you're not going to be able to make it to steel and stone fucking support where you can right yeah absolutely i mean because that's that's where it's at these days is you know playing playing the fucking places that but dude no let's talk about all hell here so you guys started in in about 2013 by uh metal archives yeah and you know, you've released quite a few things since then. So where are you all standing now? Uh, right now, we just, a couple weeks ago, kind of for Halloween, released a, a single, but it's actually got three songs on it. Um, cover of The Howl by Sam Hain is on there, and then there's a remix of an older song, and then an instrumental song that we did. Um, earlier this year, we put out our newest EP, All Hail the Night, and uh, kind of at that point where we're starting to work on newer stuff for maybe a full length. We'll see. Right on. Now, when it comes to releasing things, are you, I mean, obviously you all had a few full lengths before, so that's been the norm. Now with how the pandemic has changed everything, like with people's release structures and stuff, do you, do you still want to keep doing full lengths? Is, is that, do you feel like is the, is the yeah. best way to go? I don't know if it's the smartest way to do it, but we kind of, we like doing full lengths. That's kind of most of what we've done before. And e even on the EP, like we kind of do concept records, which is easier right. to do on a, on a full length. And I'm like, I'm the main songwriter. And so I don't know. I've always been a guy that, is more of an albums guy than a, you know, one song. Than a singles guy. guy. Like, yeah, I get yeah. that. Like, I usually, like, if I listen to something, I'll go listen to a whole album rather than, you know, unless I'm really just itching to hear a specific song and, and nothing else. But um, right so, there. Yeah, there yes. there will be, there will be full lengths in the future, hopefully. Um, as far as like with the EP and the single that we just did, we kind of wanted to do something a little bit different. Just like while we're, you know, we're on a, a different label now, so we talked with them about what we wanted to do, and we felt like it was a good time to try something new and do a smaller release. Definitely. Hell yeah. Jason, what do you have? I will say uh, the Terminus Hate City out uh, label you're on now. Yeah. Well, dude, they sent me uh, they sent me my package, and dude, it was like chock full of like stuff. Awesome. Like, hell yeah, yeah that's yeah. what I'm talking about. Yeah, so... Yeah, they yeah. seem pretty cool. I've, I've been looking forward to hearing more of what they got to uh, offer in the yeah. future. There's some solid bands on the, on the label for sure. Yeah. And also the uh, THC uh, abbreviation is pretty awesome too. 
because I think you're, I think you're, uh, <laughs> yeah. I think the, I think yeah. the uh, catalog number is like THC 11 or something. So I was like, oh, okay, I get it. Right. <laughs> that's, that's pretty cool. That's, that's, that's good. I mean, you know, hey, let's see what you did there. Yeah. <laughs> but no, seriously, there's so many awesome indie labels out there today that like, you know, provide such a great service to, you know, bands of various, you know, levels. Yeah. You know, from yeah, in, sure. the independent I mean, the, bands. The, Go ahead. Yeah, the landscape has changed so much just like since the pandemic as far as labels and everything goes. So like that's, we wanted to change things up and try out like a smaller indie label this time around as well it's more flexible and you know give us more options to work with and things are just different in general with how labels are structured now so right yeah, it's, it's not a bad time to be a musician though definitely not and that's the cool thing about it now too is you know when it comes to rights for your your albums and su and such with these right. with independent labels you're yeah. not signing over your masters in perpetuity anymore right because you know now there's a lot of places that have laws against uh companies being able to do that yeah you know what do you look forward to most when you're out on the road uh it's a good question i mean playing the show is the best part obviously there's a lot of sitting around other than that we usually i don't know depending how long the drives are and how early we have to load in the next day or whatever we'll try and find something cool to do beforehand right on somewhere good uh, to eat at least right uh check out the local eateries the local digs the local record stores and do, do you all do the, like the museum stuff Sometimes, like, if, if there's enough time, we'll try and, like, scope out stuff like that. Uh, Hell last, yeah. week, last weekend, we played up in um, Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. We did, like, Shadow Woods Metal Fest, had a little uh, reunion fest. It was pretty cool, but we we're about an hour south of Centralia, Pennsylvania. I don't know if you're familiar with that town at all. Right. It's like an old, it's like an abandoned uh coal mining town that has been like the underground has been on fire since the 60s or 70s and they had to evacuate it like there's four people that still live there but it had to be evacuated in the 90s like almost completely holy and shit so, yeah so it's just like a total like dead ghost town there's nothing there like it's overgrown with with like you know trees and woods like there's still uh streets and everything that are paved but mostly grown over and we we went up there just because uh you know, we had all heard of it before, and it's kind of, kind of a cool, spooky place. It's, it's like the shit they, that like Silent Hill is. Yes, yeah, yes, they, yeah, they based them specifically the movie they based uh, off of Centralia. But yeah. yeah, yeah, it was really cool. That's sounds wild. Like a, sounds like a cool place to do a music video, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we took some cool pictures up there, but we'll hell see if we yeah. Can. Now, now that you've said it, Jason, now everybody in fucking Pennsylvania is going to go do it. <laughs> Probably. That's okay. For sure. You know, it's going to happen. It's, it's cool. Like, uh, definitely, definitely love checking out like the weird, the weird sites. Like when you go up to like Wisconsin, you see like, uh, cheese castle and shit like that, yeah. which is, is like cheese outlets. Nice. And that's fucking awesome shit. Like if you're a fucking like every fucking kind of cheese connoisseur, <laughs> they've got you covered. Yeah. That's not, that sounds like a place that we would go. Oh yeah. And then it's like there's like a barbecue place that's like right next to it. So you can go over and get cheese and barbecue. And it's like, what? It's it's really what the road is all about is finding yeah. what crazy cool places you can eat. You know, yeah. that's that's the real American tour, American tour schedule. And and I think that's you know the why I want to have the episode with uh with uh Graham from Seven Sisters and a few of the other people who 
from Europe and South America that have been on it have toured the, the U.S. recently. <laughs> right. Like, what fucked up food did you try that you ne- you never heard of in yeah. your country before? What <laughs> what food made you sick that you had? Yeah, and and a lot of people say White Castle. Yeah. Not gonna lie, it's easy to overdo <laughs> it on those sliders. It is. Jason, are you, you're the you're the crystal purist, aren't you? Um, I prefer crystal to White Castle, but you know they're both pretty, they both taste about the same because you know they're they got the the burger that you're not sure what it is, and then the onions to mask it, and then the bread. Yeah, so right, 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 White, right. White Castle's got those little uh, cheesecake on a stick. Things yes, yes, they things. do. Yes, they do. <laughs> yeah, there's no uh, there's no slider chains here in, where me and Jacob are from. So anytime we're oh, like, really? anytime it's like you see him, it's like, yeah, I pro- why not? You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know that's the thing. I keep thinking that I I keep forgetting that you two are like you know in in Asheville. So <laughs> yeah. I mean, who knows? He might be like five miles from me. It's hard to say. You know. <laughs> <laughs> right and, and be in another zip code yeah yeah um so okay so you're you're interested in putting out a new a new full length for for next year yeah we'll we'll see hope i mean it would be nice to record next year at the very least so definitely uh now when it comes to recording do you all like how do you all approach recording do you do it all like in an actual studio do you how do y'all do it so far we've done everything in a studio um okay the last the ep that we did that we put out earlier this year we recorded with um chris from black tusk down right in savannah yeah and uh we'll probably whatever we record next we'll probably record with him also definitely yeah that uh that studio is great <laughs> <laughs> it, got a nice, uh, nice setup. It is. Have you guys ever recorded with anybody here? No, we, no, we recorded uh, in Greensboro a few times, but we haven't actually okay. recorded at like at home at all. all right. Yeah, I was yeah. just curious about that. There's not really that many metal focused studios or yeah around here, but uh, there is there is one that opened up pretty close to me. Um, the guys from up north, his name is Dave Kaminsky. And I did right. a, I did a drum video with him, man. And I have to say, like, he he overdubbed my live drums into a, into the existing track. And, like, I was pretty impressed with what it sounded. Yeah. So yeah, we actually, might actually record with him our yeah. next uh, project. He, he wouldn't be a bad call, I don't think. I actually went and visited his studio last year. We hung out a bit. He seems yeah, like he knows his stuff. Yeah, it's in his basement. Like you just yeah. like it's like a it's like a modular house in a neighborhood, and yep. you just like walk in, like walk up a couple steps, and it's like, damn, this is pretty nice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. got some nice amps too. Yeah, he does. Yeah, everything was pretty uh pretty top notch. Hell yeah! Because you all are both from Asheville, and with the with trying to get on Steel and Stone, and it finally happening, you know. It it's got to feel good. It's got to feel like a a bit of a homecoming too, right? Like, because yeah, I, mean, I think that's a, you know, because you're both in the same scene and everything else. Yeah, we've played together before. We we opened yeah. Black Tusk. Um, yeah, about seven years ago, I guess something like yeah, that. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, it has been a while. But um, yeah, I mean, I've seen I've seen them about three or four times in Asheville. Just here and there different places and and now to play them again you know is pretty cool and i'm pretty excited yeah, to have them on because there's not many uh there's not not to sound like an asshole but there's not really ash- many actual bands that i like relate to music wise so like when right, you like yeah. actually find one that like works out yeah. it's like yeah so yeah, yeah for sure. exactly and, and yeah, thanks and, for having us yeah no problem and i know uh i know alonzi is playing with you now so uh we get to work him really yeah. hard yeah yeah <laughs> Got and, that day. Yeah, we tried to put him back to back, but he said no. Let's see, what you're made of. Let's see what you're made of, dude. Come on. He just doesn't want to set up his drums twice. Oh, was that it? I thought he didn't want to play two sets back to back. Nah, who knows? 
so yeah, I want to go ahead and switch over to derailed, Jason. Yeah, man. Uh, so I want to ask some derailed questions. Derailed is uh, the 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 random question segment where you know I draw from a deck of cards and whatever happens happens. All right, I'll try not to get myself in trouble. Oh no, get yourself in as much trouble as you can. <laughs> uh, just don't drink and drive. Uh, <laughs> If you were a superhero, what would your superpower be? What what would it actually be, or what would I want it to be? Yeah, what would it be? You know what? I don't know. I mean, that's that's. I, I guess it's a what would you want it to be? Because obviously, you know, there's the fucking. Why is Swamp Thing what he is? You know, he. I'm sure he didn't right. want that. I don't know. I, I would probably be like an evil Doctor Strange. Nice. I uh, I dig like all alt universe Doctor Strange stuff. You know, because yeah. yeah. Oh, Jason, what would yours be? You gotta. Nothing you're power. here too, man. You gotta answer this. Um, it would probably be um, it would probably be being super rich, so I could hire my own drum tech. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you, it's, so, getting, a little, it's getting a little much anymore. <laughs> so, okay, so you'd be almost like a Bruce Wayne then. You'd be doing it to hire somebody, but you're not. You wouldn't be paying them like a slave wage. You mean wouldn't be like hitting them with the fucking whip or nothing? No, I'd be, I'd, be like. I'd be I would pay him well. That yeah. doesn't go there. That's right. <laughs> Actually, I would probably just buy my own venue and just leave the drums set up at all times and only open up when I had a show worth yeah, playing. Never have to move them. Yeah, exactly. Like it would be like just put them on a drum uh, like, like a drum riser. A, stage and a little a little like a trap door that goes up and down. Yeah, just like your own yes. secret riser that comes up out of the stage. Yeah, it's just a drum riser that they stay on, and like when I need them, I just I just like raise it up, and I'm ready to go. You know, we actually talked about a roll around fucking little riser. What is true friendship? True friendship. Right, right now, I'm gonna say that true friendship is your brother driving while you do a podcast. <laughs> shout out yes <laughs> to your brother uh jason uh someone who helps you bury the body without asking questions i That's dig both both yeah. of those while listening to all hell our, our preferably preferably the last ep it's pretty good it'll, it'll get those shovels moving quick man I, no shit yeah, dude. especially uh especially neon babylon man that, that song is killer i love that song thank you man dude and and you know that's one of the fucking that's what's awesome about you know this right here oh, the, is the fucking CD steel and stone forged yeah. in fire compilation cd and fucking everybody has two tracks on there and it's like fuck yeah man i was listening to it earlier today when i was on my way to get some uh stage prop gear mm -hmm. and uh yeah so fucking jamming the fuck out of it <laughs> uh, what type of contest do you think it would be awesome to judge mortal combat or like <laughs> kumite from bloodsport nice yes i, I just want to watch that <laughs> wow you want to be songs playing of I wanna be the, i want to be the one that says finish him yes <laughs> Uh, see i don't know like i don't know if i'd want to be like shao khan though or shang soon shang soon because he could fucking you know he lives off of the souls of the fucking of the yeah. losers right he can, he can do everyone's moves too exactly and he can do and he can turn into everybody but you know the the problem with shao khan is like he couldn't jump he couldn't fuck you know he was too too big, too bold. That hammer, that hammer hurts pretty bad though. Yeah, going so. back, going to Mortal Kombat three there. Yeah, fuck. Oh, Jason, what about you? I don't know. 
I don't really care about contests all that much, to be honest with, with you. Come on, you're a football fan. Yeah. Would you but... want to be would you want to be a ref on the football field? No, not really. Um because you'd have to run, right? Yeah, exactly. That's too <laughs> too damn demanding. <laughs> Says yeah, the drummer. Yeah, I count the four and I start over, dude. That's it. I don't I don't have time for tens and and you know, yards and stuff like that. Um I don't know, man. Like probably I would probably do like some kind of like musical contest, like battle of the bands to the death or something. <laughs> Mortal Kombat battle of the bands. Yeah, exactly. You know, something like that. It's like, oh, you didn't shred quite as hard as the other guy. You gotta go. <laughs> or no, like you take a band and you just like you pick the weakest performance out of the four or five, you know, and then you just like form a band out of the survivors. Was there a movie that you were not allowed to see as a kid, uh, but all your friends got to see it? Nope. Watched everything. <laughs> yeah, I pretty much did too. You know, yeah. I, I never was just like... There, there were probably things... There were probably things that uh, my parents would have preferred for me not to watch, but Right. Yeah. I saw, uh, I saw a lot of R- R-rated horror at a young age. Yep. Same. Same. Probably I still remember. <laughs> nah. I still remember waking up and it being like the Friday night movie and it being Phantasm 2 on at like 2 in the morning. Nice. And I was like, what the fuck is this? This is great get to the fucking end scene and we're in there and where they're in the white room and it's just like the fucking like the fucking yellow blood and all the fucking shit it's like yes this is so fucking awesome <laughs> jason was there anything for you define um what a what age are we talking to, up to well, I mean, like 12, was there, 13. I don't know, was there, was there anything all your friends got to see that you didn't get to because your parents didn't let you? The only one that comes to, really comes to mind would probably be like basic instinct. Um, That's the only, that's probably the only one I remember. Like my mom was like, you can't watch this. I was like, yeah, watch me. I'll fucking just sneak out of bed like fucking four in the morning and watch it, you know, pop the VHS in and. You know, fast forward to the good part, go back to bed, uh, basically. <laughs> and like, then you know, he forgets going on, the, you know. And then he forgot to put the tape back where it was. So when oh, the no, next no, no. time they the, watched it, I put it back in the tape rewinder, and then she took it back to the rental store the next day. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's the only one I really remember. Like I couldn't watch everything else. Was like pretty much fair game. I mean, it was like action movies i mean i went to go see predator in the drive-in when i was like seven so i mean like it it wasn't really like the violence part that was an issue so you know it was like robocop terminator um, aliens you know all that you know i was a pretty uh pretty enthralled in it you know right early age yeah oh yeah i still remember being like eight nine ten running fucking shit like toxic avenger and yeah and all of that shit <laughs> and fucking being like are you sure your mom and they're not gonna care i mean you see what they fucking let me rent before it's like come on <laughs> yeah <laughs> damn dating dating ourselves there. 80s parenting was like really weird because like they didn't care about the violence just like you just can't see this movie because she's topless it's like well, right okay i'll just watch it later or i'll just watch it with dad <laughs> what is the scariest cult you've ever heard of scariest cult i don't know there's like different kinds of scary right dude like for me it would have been it's somebody like david koresh like the Branch Davidian people, like that cult is just like, because they were like way the fuck out there. (laughs) I mean, probably like Heaven's Gate. Yeah. Yeah, That's what I was going to say. 
something obviously they're all they also have their religion based too which is like weird so yeah i was gonna say that's because they are religion yeah. based well some are aliens <clears throat> you know the L. Ron hubbard stuff or even like scientology yeah. but um right but yeah i would i would say like heaven's gate dude oh, right. we had a band here in louisville called heaven's gate gospel revival how are they <laughs> They were great. Yeah. Then, then some member changes, and they changed the name, and yeah. But, um, so yeah, I have one more question. But before we get to it, you know, as always, links are listed below. So please give a like, a share, and a follow, and go see these guys on tour, uh, because they're going to be touring all around, fucking steel and stone. Uh, dude, Jacob, do you have any shout outs you want to give to anybody today? Uh to you for having me on the show and Jason for inviting us to play the fest. Yeah, man, it's no problem. Like I said, Josh re- Josh Roasting reached out to me and I was like, dude, it's fine. Yeah. Awesome. I just I just didn't want to insult you by having you open though. I was like, well I really all I got to open it though. So Yeah. Well like I, Han will be that, was, that guy. That was kind of a last that was a last minute thing. So appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Well you know at the auditorium, like I I've, I always tell like people when I ask them to open it's like dude, it's usually like the second best crowd of the night. Yeah. For some reason. You know, it's usually like first band and then like a multi band and multi band shows, it's usually like the fourth or fifth band. It's like those two are like the best times. So hopefully right. hopefully Plus, they stay free. But I think it might help in a way to have us first because I like people are gonna show up. Yeah. Like for sure and be there. Like when it yeah. starts, so that's cool. I think it'll help. Yeah, I mean, it'd be cool if like it'd be cool if like all these comp CDs went to like your fans, and that was it. I mean, that would be awesome to me. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because I only made Hell? fifty, so once they're gone, they're gone. Hell yeah! Yeah, awesome. So, final question of the day: um, If you could design your own planet, what would the environment be like? What the environment looks like. It would probably, I don't know, it would be like a whole planet of Blashir from uh, immortal mythology. I don't know. It'd be mountains and forests and snowy landscapes. Right on. If I can be like in Middle Earth and, and shit like that, where it's all fucking. You know, no real technology, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, sword and, you know, sorcery. Uh, you know, I'd like to go back and that would be a cool fucking era to, you know, that fantastical era to fucking, because it's got to be based off of something, you know, legend or whatever. So, right. Yeah, it'd be cool. Hell yeah. Jason, if you could, what would yours be like? Um, I think I'm living in the perfect environment right now. It's uh, not very hot out and it's, <laughs> it's pleasant and I don't sweat all damn day. And uh, Dude. I can go between shorts and pants, you know, it's getting dark at a good time. So yeah. I'm- the, past, the past weekend was bad though. Not a fan of 80 degrees in late October. No, uh, no it, takes all the, it takes all the fun out of it, man. Dude. <laughs> yeah. T- where I, where it is here right now, it's forty. Oh wow! Yeah, so yeah, I got and, caught in uh, I got caught in the cold weather. I was like shorts this morning. I was like, hell yeah, it's nice out. I was like, shit, mm. I really regret putting these shorts on this morning when it's like you know <laughs> forty five and the wind's like blowing like a son of a bitch out there. I'm like, yeah, man, freezing. Right. No hoodie, no nothing. I was like, well, and, yeah, that was my thing. That's what I did. I fucking didn't do the thing. Fucking I went to get fucking like i said stage prop shit and fucking was just like oh god damn it's so fucking cold what the fuck is wrong with me <laughs> i'm fucking 40 fucking years old the fuck am i not fucking taking a jacket for <laughs> it happens right well before we go mark i'm gonna read off all hell's uh tour dates because i got them in front of me here just so everyone knows so eleven nine at uh, Savannah, Georgia at El Rocco Lounge. Eleven ten, uh, Steel and Stone. Obviously, uh, they start at seven. Uh, eleven eleven, Charleston at the Tin Roof. 
Uh, 11 16, Knoxville at the Brickyard. 11 17, Johnson City at the Hideaway. 11 18 says TBA. Has that been filled yet? Yeah, still still up in the air. May or may okay, not well, have a show somewhere, that somewhere in the area. Um, yeah. And then 11 19 back in Asheville with uh, Goat Horror, Withered, yeah. and Spider. So yeah. that's not Spider, it's Spider with a T, not a D. Um, but yeah, that <laughs> yeah. should be a pretty killer show. Uh, yeah, sure. is, that will be a fucking awesome show. Because fuck you guys and uh, Spider and fucking Gohor. Hell yeah. And Withered. Yeah. And Withered. Yeah. Fuck yeah. That'll be fucking awesome. Yeah. Jason. With withered are buddies of ours. And like we've known the guys in Gohor for a while. And like it's just never worked out for us to play together. So we're stoked to finally be able to do it. Hell yeah. yeah. Definitely. It seems like Dude. that venue is getting a lot better metal in there too than just like Grateful Dead jam bands. And it shit. seems because we've never played there, but it seems like they're booking really cool stuff now. Yeah, now the burial venue is about to open too. Eulogy. Mm-hmm. So I'm hoping it's not a load in of steps, but I have a, I have yeah. a, I have a bad feeling that it is. Yeah, it might be from the pictures. Like, oh man. Yeah, it's yeah. the worst. Maybe they'll get an elevator. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't been in there yet. To see That's what I said, too. Yeah. When he said that, I was like, maybe they'll get an elevator. Yeah. And he's like, no, probably not. <laughs> we can hope. Exactly. Dude, we had a club that, you know, you had to go up and then around mm-hmm. and then up again in there. And they had a service ramp in the back through the kitchen. And it it was like a fucking X design, right? So yeah. it's like, but it was like fucking steep as shit. And like trying to push your fucking cabs up that fucking ramp. I mean, if yeah, you fucking it, it's slip, like a cab. <laughs> yeah. If you the fucking, fridge. yeah, you would have to drag it up that fucking ramp. And it's like at a, it was like at a fucking forty degree angle. Yeah, and it's like fuck that. It's like if you fucking ever dropped it, man, and if you were like fucking yeah, pushing toast. it up, you'd be dead. <laughs> fucking D E D dead. <laughs> uh dude, Jacob, thank you so much for coming in the Metal Forge this man. week. This has been awesome. On Thanks your way out me. today, what do you want to play from all hell? What do I want to play from all hell? Probably black leather wings off of our latest EP because it has a solo from our buddy Nate from Skeleton Witch. You did an awesome job. Fuck yeah. I dig it. I, I listened to it earlier, and I'm like, man, this is so fucking good. Yeah, man, it's like 25 <laughs> minutes, dude. It's like such an easy listen, you know. <laughs> right? So here it is. Black Leather Wings. <sighs> awesome.
in 2017, one man's vision and passion for all things metal started out as a record store in his house. Years later, the fight against a mainstream empire continues as Shade Beast. An independent metal collective and online store based in Athens, Georgia, is the world's premier heavy metal brand for music heads that value authenticity over the mainstream acceptance. Featuring original t-shirts from some of the best underground artists, as well as stickers, posters from the Shade Beast Presents concert series. Unique, one-of-a-kind collectibles and small curated selection of vinyl and cassettes from the masters old and new. Visit ShadeBeast.com and enter promo code SITHLORD for free domestic shipping on your first order, whether you're a new customer or returning. And be sure to join the Shade Beast social groups on Facebook and the interwebs to keep up with the new release announcements and talk all things metal and Star Wars. You'll never find a more wretched hive of scum and filth. Welcome to the night. You think you know Night Demon? Then the Night Demon Heavy Metal Podcast is for you. Step into the darkness as we peel back the curtain to give you an unprecedented, all-access look into the mind and the heart of the demon. We're talking band history, song analysis, studio anecdotes, stories from the road. It's everything a diehard Night Demon fan could want and more. This is the only place to learn the inside scoop the deep dive trivia, the untold tales from the band members themselves and those closest to the Night Demon story. Need more? The sacred Night Demon crypt will be pried open to reveal demo recordings that have never before seen the light of day. All with in-depth commentary by the band and the people who were there for the writing and recording process. This is a gold mine, a treasure trove of all things Night Demon. Head over to nightdemon.net or wherever you listen to podcasts. Since 2013, there has been a calling from the underground, from the graves of all those unholy, and they decided to make a zine to talk about all of this. Soul Grinder Zine! An independent metal zine to keep you informed on all things metal and horror from the underground. Available in both print and digital formats, they're bringing you the best interviews and reviews out there today. Not only do they do the zine, but they also do compilation CDs. Check them out at facebook.com slash soulgrinder.zine and start your subscription now. Hey everybody, let me tell you about the new sponsor to the Metal Forge, Unchained Tapes. They're an independent Pennsylvania tape label. They focus on extreme metal and punk with a killer approach to the tape scene. Visit their web store at unchainedtapes.bigcartel.com now to get your fill of tapes. And for being a Metal Forge listener, enter the code METALFORGE10 at checkout to get a 10% discount on your total purchase. That's unchainedtapes.com bigcartel.com What's up Metal Forge fans? This is Alan Bishop, the alchemist of Indiana's Black Forest and head distiller at Spirits of French Lick. Do you find yourself drawn to the unexplained, fascinated by the Fortean, or enchanted by the paranormal? If the things that go bump in the night resonate in your mind, then tune into my brand new podcast. If you have ghosts, you have everything. Featuring first hand accounts, collected stories, interviews, history, and speculation related to all things not of this world. Available now on Anchor, Spotify, Google, Amazon, and more. Set back, relax, and remember if you have ghosts, you have everything. Thank you.
Hey, let me tell you guys about Mercenary Press. They're an independent London label and distributor of all things metal. Mercenary Press delivers the goods from their own independent zine. Trust me, you're going to want to get in on that. To distributing various bands from all over the world, including Cramp from Spain and Sadistic Force from Texas. Visit mercenarypress.bigcartel.com to find out what all they have in stock and what you can order. And for Metal Forge listeners, enter code METALFORGE10 to receive a discount on your total purchase at mercenarypress.bigcartel.com. Check it out now. Hey, Metalheads, it's with great pleasure I get to tell you guys about a new sponsor to the Metal Forge, Ageless Art, New Albany. After 20 years of owning and operating Ageless Art in Clarksville, Indiana, Phil Garrett had a vision for a new type of tattoo studio, something that is clean and modern, sleek, refined, inviting. And he's done just that with Ageless Art in New Albany. You can find it at... 2736 Charlestown Road, New Albany, Indiana, 47150. Business hours are Monday through Saturday, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. Sundays are 12 to 6. All sessions are appointment only, so give them a call and go get you some new ink. Or if it's your first time, go get your first one, baby. Maxwell's House of Music in Jeffersonville, Indiana is the premier 12,500 square foot music superstore that has served both the Southern Indiana and Louisville, Kentucky metro area for over four decades. Originally founded by Marvin and Beverly Maxwell in the 70s, this gym remains a Maxwell family owned business. Mark Maxwell, along with his business partner, Whitney McNichol, continue the reputation as being a national resource for all things music. In 2022, the iconic Guitar Emporium of Louisville relocated to Maxwell's Music, creating the largest independently owned showroom in the region. The retail offerings at Maxwell's Music includes a huge selection of guitars, basses, amplifiers, effects pedals, modeling amps, keyboards, drums, banjos, mandolins, ukuleles, sound systems, stage lighting equipment, and accessories. The music education program at Maxwell's is second to none. From private instrument and voice lessons to DG, EDM, recording, songwriting, and music theory to rock school, weekend warriors, and Maxwell's music lab, there is something for every age and every ability level. In repair land, guitar and instrument repairs and refurbishment are taken care of by the Maxwell's team of expert guitar technicians and luthiers. They also do instrument appraisals. Maxwell's offers installations for professional, audiovisual, and lighting systems for schools, churches, clubs, VFWs, funeral homes, sports fields, and so much more. There's also rentable space at Maxwell's. From music practice or rehearsal rooms for individuals or bands, all the way to a meeting space and concert venue that seats up to 120. That also includes a professional audiovisual and lighting system and a sound booth. Maxwell's has it all. All this plus an original, functioning 1947 recording booth to make your own record, to the Guitar Hero throne, to their very own Elvis statue, and don't forget the Harmony Green Pocket Park. There's a reason Maxwell's House of Music in Jeffersonville, Indiana, has been recognized by the National Association of Music Merchants as the number one award-winning best store design, as well as top 100 music store year after year. You gotta see it to believe it. Maxwell's House of Music in Jeffersonville, Indiana. 